So a pleasant day to everyone, especially to Captain Reyes, who's behind this activity and who pursue us to learn while embracing the novelty of distance learning. So I, with Chapuman de Mayuga Nicole A, together with my colleague B of NS2A1, will now present our own familiarization about the radio detection and radio. So first, I will elaborate the basic purpose of radar. So basically, a radar is an equipment on board ship, particularly inside the bridge, that provides data such as the bearing and distance of an object or the targets from your own ship position. So it aids the navigator in collision avoidance and safe navigation at sea. So let's start. First, let us turn on our radar. So this is what a radar looks like when it's on standby mode. So during this mode, there are functions that can be assessed, such as halimbawa, we are navigating at night and masyadong maliwanag yung display ng ating radar in a way na hindi na natin makita or maaninag yung mga data na ibinibigay niya. So here at the Brilliant Soft Key, located here at the right, lower right corner of our screen, we can adjust the brilliance of our screen. So for example, if the user left click the soft key, a brilliance menu will appear. So ito yung tinatawag natin brilliance menu. So here, the user can manually adjust the brilliance of the screen such as the brilliance of heading line, EBL, VRM, cursor, ARPA, and so on. So to exit naman this brilliance menu, just left click exit brilliance. So what if the user used the right key upon clicking? Let's see what happened. So yan, a default option will appear. So upon choosing between those default options, just left click the desired option. Yan, so another purpose kung bakit natin na-adjust yung brilliance ng ating display is that yung liwanag na ibinibigay ni screen is pwedeng mag-reflect into another object inside our bridge with, which can be visible to another vessel. So, alam naman natin na while navigating, especially at night, kailangan um, navigation lights lang ang makikita sa ating ship. So, kapag nangyari yun, it, may can, it can cause conflict, misunderstanding, and at worst, collision. So, next, as we noticed, Every time our cursor enters inside the video circle, it changes into plus sign. So, itong plus sign, ito yung tinatawag nating video cursor. So, since it is inside the video circle, the data about the position of our video cursor is located here at the lower right of our screen, which is, this is what we call cursor data. So, paano naman kapag nasa labas ng video circle ang ating cursor? So, yan. Yan ang tinatawag nating screen cursor. So, as we noticed kanina, yung cursor data is na-replace na ng stuff, fixed soft minus. So, ito yung tinatawag nating fixed soft minus located here at the lower right corner of our screen. So, each menu has its own function functions that that will be tackled on later. So, parang nakakalito naman if kailangan pa nating i-memorize yung or which key are we going to use in order to assess a function. Yan. So, na, napapansin nyo yung ating cursor. So, along with our cursor, meron tayong two bar. So, which means kapag empty yung two bar natin, meaning to say, hindi pwedeng i-click yung area where our cursor points. So, on the other hand, kapag meron namang two white bar yung ating cursor, means to say we can use the left key or right key in order to assess a function. So, basic lang, di ba? So, kapag nasa, white na, kapag nasa right naman yung white bar, right key lang yung pwede natin gamitin. And kapag nasa left naman, left key lang. So, in all, napaka user-friendly pala nitong ating radar, no? So, in fact, if I am a first-time user of this equipment, hindi ako malilito which key are, uh, which key I am going to use in order to assess a function. 
So for the range skill selection or and display, may I call on Midshipman Ignacio Edison. Thank you, Midshipman De Mayuga Nicole. So good day everyone. I'm Midshipman Ignacio Edison. So I'm going to report a uh, range scale. Uh, this show key located at the upper left corner of the screen is for range scale, scale selection. So it usually contains information about how wide the scale used in display here in our video circle. So we can adjust it by left clicking this show key for dropping down the option and a left click to the chosen range or just left click this plus sign to increase the range or just left click this minus sign to decrease the range. Pag sinabing decrease the range, yun yung distance ng screen ng radar or range ng radar mo kung hanggang saan, saan ba kaya niyang ma-pick up. So for the next topic, I would like to call on Midshipman Liwanag Charles Bruce. Thank you, Midshipman Ignacio. Good morning, Midshipman Liwanag Charles Bruce Andre O. User specify data, then this box located at the upper part of Fix Soft G menu is the user specify data display. It contains information which relates to your ship such as the speed and depth and own ship position. To change type of data presented here, just left click this caption. We saw here the data display when a specific data is inaccessible associated without is replaced by dashes. We saw here the own ship's position. The source can be any one of the following. The DGPS or Differential Global Positioning System and GPS or Global Positioning System. If there is a position alarm, the latitude and longitude is displayed in red. And lastly, the width and depth either true or relative wind speed is displaced depending on the data received from the sensor. The width bearing is displaced relative to on ship's heading. Thank you. For our next topic, I would like to call on Midshipman Escares. Thank you, Mr. Liwanag. So, good day everyone. I am Midshipman Escares Nathaniel R. And I would like to tackle on the function of our radar, which is called Caption and Readout. So where can we find this function of the radar? So if you look at the upper right section of our radar screen, we can see the heading caption, heading readout, speed caption, and speed readout. So uh, at the right side of our speed readout, we can see the speed input. So ano pa nga ba yung mga function nito? Kung para saan ba ito? So the main function of these parts on this radar is to basically show the information such as the true heading and the speed of our ship. So dun pa lang sa dalawang information na makukuha natin, na makikita natin sa function ng radar na ito, ay eh malalaman natin na napaka-importante talaga nito in order for us to maintain a safe voyage. So like I said, the speed input, which is, the, which is at the right side of our speed readout, uh, we need to left-click this so in order for us to reveal the drop-down menu. So may kita natin, may mga options po siya dyan na may kita natin. So para saan nga ba itong mga options na to? So pwede po natin mabago yung uh, speed caption natin into two types, either STW or speed through water and SOG or speed over ground. So speed over ground is mainly used when the ship is being at drift. So tandaan nyo guys, so bago natin magawa yun, yung mga changes na iyon, speed readout can only be changed by the user when manual speed mode has been enabled. Thank you guys. So, for the next topic, I would like to call on Midshipman Juarez. Thank you, Midshipman Juarez. I am Juarez Jan Christopher A. And I will talk about the transmitter type in use or the transceiver. So, the transceiver it is located under the range scale or below the master. When you click the X band, it will change to S band. So the S band have 2.7 to 3 gigahertz, low and with lower frequency and shorter wavelengths, and it is useful for detecting small boats and also for during heavy weather. So when you click the S band, it will change to X band. So X band have 8 to 12 gigahertz, 
radar with high frequency and long wavelength and used for giving sharper more detailed image and better resolution on radar screen mostly used for traffic zone and navigation in the open sea. For the next report, I would like to call Midshipman Arquita. Thank you, Midshipman Juarez, and I am Midshipman Arquita Sosigon, and I will tackle the, my topic, Brilliant Selection of Day, day and Night Control. Uh, brilliant, brilliant is located at the, at the right bottom corner below NAB, Left click brilliance to see drop down option. In the drop down option, you can see day, night one, night two, night three. Please select day one. This is the appearance of day one. Left click to see night one. And this is the appearance of night one. Left click brilliance again for turn night two. That is the appearance of night two. And left click again to see the final option night three this is the appearance of night three and all of those four options serve the same function it helps navigator to see in daylight to view the radar display and if it is dim or night it helps uh, it helps navigator or, or operator to see when it sits, when it comes to dark vision okay. and i would like to call the next present presenter is as as midshipman Osente. That is all. Thank you, midshipman Arquita. Today, I am midshipman Osente, Special Navy 8, and I am about to report the video circuit. So, ano nga ba yung video circuit? It is the bluish circle found at the center of a radar screen. So, when the radar antenna starts to revolve or starts to transmit, it is now starting to send radio waves as well as receive them. So yung mga returned echoes or yung mga sound signal na tumama sa mga objects will now be transferred into an information and that information will be displayed in a form of an image. Ito na yung mga speckles na pwede maging barko, bato, alon, or ulan at iba pa na makikita natin sa ating video circle which is crucial in navigation. Okay? For our next topic is about azimuth circle. So, ano nga ba yung azimuth circle? It is the ring of numbers which surrounds our video circle. So, it is from 00 degrees up to 360 degrees completing a full circle. So, what is its significance to our video circle and to the radar itself? A simple thing is azimuth circle gives direction which is used when getting a bearing line, especially when getting a radar fix. Our azimuth circle is connected to our gyro compass which gives us a true di direction. But when we select an unstabilized display, the azimuth circle will change its directions according to the ship's bow, giving us a relative direction. Thank you. For the next topic, may I call on Midshipman Rabana. Thank you, Midshipman Ausente. And good day, everyone. I'm Midshipman Rabana Leynad, and I'm going to discuss my topic, which is all about the selecting a mode of operation about our transmit mode and standby mode. First, transmit. Transmit is located at the lower left corner of our radar screen above the initialization. And how to put our radar in a transmit mode? First, position our screen cursor and that's transmit soft key, then left click to toggle it to put our radar in a transmit mode. And also, uh, when our radar is in a standby mode, meaning to say our radar is on but not transmitting a signal. And what is this signal? This signal is also known as the radio frequency electromagnetic signal, which we can use to detect a target. And also please left click the transmit. Please left click. And, and when our radar is in a transmit mode, and 
now it is transmitting a radio frequency electromagnetic signal enable to detect a target and as you can see after we put our radar in a transmit mode uh, there's are some dots that will pop up in our video circle and that then those dots are the target that are detected by, by our radar and also this is an indication that our radar is now scanning and also as you can see there's are some settings that are added in our radar screen which is also used to control our radar to have the best detections of our target and this is a ring on and off uh, standby full strength gain ring uh, relative vector center and trials and that's all about my topic and may I call uh, Mr. Malunes to discuss the next topic so thank you Midshipman Rabanal I'm Midshipman Malunes and I'm going to discuss about the transceiver tuning so the first thing to do is to turn off or lower the le level to properly adjust the desired tuning so transceiver tuning the transceiver Transceiver tuning indicator is located in the bottom left hand corner of the radar display. So, the current level of tuning is indicated by the shaded bar behind the tune caption. This bar indicates the level in percentage in terms with 0% on the left and 100% on the right. The tuning indicator is only displayed when the radar is in transit mode. So, for selecting manual or automatic tuning, the system defaults to the mode of tuning of last selected man or manual or AFC, or also known as automatic frequency control. So, the first step is to position the screen cursor over the AFC slash man selection field. Next is to left click to toggle the tuning control to man or manual or AFC or also known as automatic frequency control. So for manual change of tuning control, the first step is to position the screen cursor over the tune caption. Next is to left click to make the bar active the bar will appear yellow next move the cursor control left or right to tune the receiver for best results last left click to set the level and deactivate the bar the bar will return to its dim shaded that's all uh, for the next topic may we call on midshipman Perocho. so thank you Midshipman Malunes, and I'm Midshipman Perocho, and today I will discuss to you the video gain in anti clutter controls. So, what is video gain in anti clutter controls? These are the controls that when we switch it to manual, it will change independently. The controls are adjusted using the shaded bar, indicating 0% to the left and 100% to the right. The next one is Using video game control, a light background spectrum must be present to achieve the best target detection and low range performance. A temporary reduction can be useful in searching targets in rain or snow condition. So how do you adjust the gain? First is to position your cursor over the control labeled as gain. Next is to left click to make the bar active. Then move the cursor to the left or right to the level required then lastly, left click to set the level. The next one is using manual anti-clutter C and rain control. So, using the anti-clutter C control to reduce C clutter to operational level where some remaining clutter speckle is presented. On the other hand, using anti-clutter rain control to optimize the pressure of rain clutter to balance the detection of targets within the clutter region, both detection of those outside in the clutter region. To access these features or to adjust 
the rain or sleep control, first thing to do is if, if you are in an automatic mode, change it first to the manual mode. How? First is position the screen cursor over the man auto selection field. The left click to access control to manual. And if your screen is in manual mode, first is position the screen post cursor over the control you want to change. Then left click to make the cursor active. Next is to move the cursor to the left or right to the level required. And lastly, left click to set. Then automatic anti clutter controls. So this controls is used in open C conditions. This provides optimum detection by adapting the amount of clutter suppression applied to the characteristic of clutter return. So how to switch it to anti-clutter or I mean automatic anti-clutter control. So go back to the position your cursor over the man slash auto selection field then left click to access the control to automatic. So that is all for my report and if I call on midshipman Gaydor to proceed to his topic. So, thank you, Midshipman Perocho. I'm Midshipman Vedor Mark Anthony J. So, for the motion mode and presentation mode, the fields are located at the top right corner of the display, immediately to the left of the heading and speed display, are available in standby and transmit mode. So, for the presentation mode, there are two types of stabilized display, the north up and the course up. So, left click the presentation mode to see the drop down menu and Click the head up. The head up or the ship's heading marker is always shown vertically upwards indicating the straight ahead movement. So left click again to see the drop down menu and click the north up or the stabilized display. The, bear the bearing scale shows at 00, zero degrees at the top of the video circle as shown to be the true north. The ship's heading marker is shown at an appropriate bearing. Next is left click to see the drop down menu and click the course up or the stabilized display. On the selection of the course up mode, the ship's bearing is shown at the top of the video circle with the heading of 00 degrees elsewhere on the circle, still representing the true north. So for the motion mode, the motion mode determines whether our own ship moves across the radar picture or remains at a selected point and how the trails of moving targets are displayed. So the modes available for the selections are the RMR or the relative motion, the relative trails, and the true motion. So left click to see the drop down menu. Click the relative motion. For the relative motion, the display portrays the motion of the target relative to the motion of the observing ship. Relative trails on ship is displayed at its fixed point in the video circle. So normally it is in the center and all the target trails are shown relative to the ship's movement. This means that stationary targets will have trails if on ship is moving. So left click again to see the drop down menu and click the true motion. <clears throat> the true motion will tell us about the range, the compass bearing and the true course of the target echoes and gives us the facilities for estimation or calculation the target speed. It will not however give us the closest approach distance without the plotting or without using the closest approach distance calculator. So, how does the true motion and the relative motion differ from each other? True motion is the motion or the speed and the dire direction that an object is moving with respect to the ground. So, while the relative motion is the motion or the speed and the direction that another object is moving with respect to your vessel. That's all and for the next topic, I would like to call on Midshipman Geo Ali. Thank you, Midshipman Vedor. So, I am Midshipman Alec Gio B, and my topic for today will be the radar transmission pulse length and also the enhanced video. So, firstly, let's talk about the radar transmission pulse length. So, the current selection of pulse length is indicated in the pulse length softly at the left-hand side of the display. 
So, the caption on the soft key box is an abbreviation of the current pulse length lecture. So, SP stands for short, short pulse, MP stands for medium pulse, and LP stands for long pulse. In selecting your design pulse length, okay, uh, position your cursor into the pulse length soft key, then left click to enable the drop down menu containing containing uh, different options of the soft key. So here we can see SP or short pulse, MP medium pulse, and LP for long pulse. So let's go back to medium pulse. Okay. So alternatively, um, when clicking on the soft key, uh, we can cycle through the um, different options of pulses. So first, let's cycle. Okay. So uh, now it's SP in short pulse. Now it's on long pulse. Then now let's go back to Pulse. Okay, so now my to next topic would be the enhanced video mode. So the enhanced video mode is a substantial improvement in the presentation of small and or short range targets, especially when operating at range scale of 3 nautical miles and above. So targets are not enhanced to own ship. So in statuary uh, and open sea conditions, always use the enhanced video mode for the best target detection. So this will enhance small ships um, targets significantly, significantly improving their perceptibility in the video display, especially on short ranges such as three nautical miles and above. So um, to enable the enhanced mode, so position your cursor to the enhanced soft key just above the game control okay, here, then left click to turn it on. So as you can see, the targets are now molded on the video display. And to turn it off, position again your soft key and enhance soft key, then turn it off. That will be all. Thank you. So I would like to call on Ms. Midshipman Berinia for the next topic. Thank you, Midshipman Alit. I'm Midshipman Berinia Jericosi, and I'll show you the dot drop down menus for particular parameters. For range, which is located at the top left corner of the display, a left click will reveal a drop down menu of the available ranges. For pulse length, it is located below the STBY or standby soft key. A right click will reveal a drop down menu listing the pulse length. For the next topic, I would like to call on Midshipman Esteva. Thank you, Midshipman Barinya. Good day, everyone. I'm Midshipman Esteva Jetter. I'm here to discuss on how to turn the range ring control on and off. Range rings can only be selected when a radar is in transmit mode. Range rings soft key is located on the top left corner below the range scale soft key. In turning on the range rings, just position the cursor on the range ring soft key, left click to turn it on. In turning off the range rings, just position again the cursor on the range ring soft key and left click to turn it off. For the next topic, I would like to call midshipman. Rivera. Thank you, Midshipman Esteba. Now, I am Midshipman Rivera McGregor D and I'm going to report the part of the range ring and the range field display. So what is range ring display? It is a fixed range ring display as a number of equally spaced concentric circle. So basically, kapag tinagal on natin yung uh, range ring display natin, makikita natin siya as a normally six pieces or six part uh, i six uh, six na circle and then paano nga pala natin makikita yon or paano natin may open yon simple lang makikita natin yon in the upper left corner below the range kill display so ile left click lang natin siya para mag on pag off ganun din pag on natin ayan magpapop up siya at makikita natin yung anim na circle which is yan yung tinatawag na range ring display Yung range field display naman is nakakonekta siya sa range scale display. Bakit? Kasi depende yun sa nakalagay na nautical miles. So, for example, nakalagay naman doon na ang range scale natin is 12 nautical miles. So, ang tendency, yung range field display natin ay mamamaximize yung space at yung per space, for example, 
yung first circle up to second circle is nakalagay 12 nautical miles, 12 nautical miles ang distance niya sa first circle up to second. So, pag sa first circle naman up to third circle, ipagpa-plus lang natin siya. So, 12 nautical miles plus 12 nautical miles is equal to 24. That's all. For next topic, I would like to call on Midshipman Angeles. Thank you, Midshipman Rivera. Um, heading control, heading marker. So the location of heading control, heading marker, lower left, corner above, hand hand video mode, control. And the function of heading control can be removed that temporarily to view or clearly to, some, to something which is other heading, heading marker is always so in the vertical line. To move into arc close, closely to the line, the procedure or cursor of the H all H L so within all the depth, all the left the P and the line. For the next reporter, I would like to call Midshipman Magaro. Thank you, Midshipman Angeles. Good day everyone, I'm Magaro John Ryan P. <clears throat> I'm, uh, and I'm here to tell you about uh, centering and off centering the video display and maximum view control. So how to <clears throat> off center the V the video display. First, position the video cursor over the all chips position, then press and hold the left key and drag the all chips position to the required off center position, then release the key. Now the <coughs> video display is off center. So how to center the display? So it's very simple to center the display. You just have to like click the center soap key located at the lower bottom right side of the reader screen your screen and the video display will be at the center of the video speaker so for the maximum view we just have to right click the center soft key to reveal the pop-up menu containing the max view op option left click to select max view or right click to close the menu so the primary advantage of the up center display is is that for any particular range skill setting, the view ahead can be extended. <clears throat> Meaning it lessens the requirement for changing the range skill setting. So, <clears throat> the centering feature is particularly advantageous in river navigation because it allows you to move the radar screen around to check the astronaut. So, that's all. So, for the next topic, I would like to call on Michipman Abeta. Thank you, Midshipman Magaru. Good day. I am Midshipman Abita Jerome M. And I will be the one to report about turning on and off the electronic range and bearing line or electronic bearing line 1 and 2 and variable range marker 1 and 2. For the location, it is located at the upper right side below our trace mode. So the question is how to operate. First is position our cursor in the EBL1 caption box and then left click to toggle on or off. Okay, the left click. And as we can see in our video circle, there's a line that appeared there. That line is what we call the electronic range and bearing line or the ERBL. So why is it ERBL and not EBL? Because of the reason that our VRM1 is still off. So let's turn on our VRM1 by positioning our cursor in the VRM1 caption box and then left click to toggle on or off. So find the left click. And as we can see, in our video circle, again, there is a circle appeared there. That circle is what we call the VRM1. And earlier, our ERBL will go back as being the EBL because of the reason that our VRM1 is already on. And because that our EBL1 and VRM1 are associated with each other, we can move them simultaneously. How? Position our cursor in their intersection and then press and hold the left key. Move or drag it to a certain target and then release the key. In doing so, you will acquire its target bearing because of the EBL and also the range because of the VRM. So we can, where can we see that? We can see the bearing in the EBL1 readout located in the upper right side beside the EBL1 caption box. For the range, it is located in the upper right side also beside the VRM1 caption box. And in changing the range of a VRM control, position our cursor in the VRM1 readout, and then left-click in order for us to have an access in it. Move to the left or to the right to 
the required range and then left click again to set the range and as i said in the ebl1 and brm1 our same goes applied for the ebl2 and brm2 but there's a feature in the ebl2 and brm2 that's not present in the ebl1 and brm1 and for that part i would like to call on midshipman dominado thank you midshipman ambita so good day i am dominado john lmrd so we already know how to use the controls of EVL1 and BRM1. So, ano nga ba pinagkaiba ng EVL1 at BRM1 sa EVL2 and BRM2? So, it has a drop-down menu that consists of uh, centered and off-centered. So, now, I will discuss the EVL2 and BRM2 centered and off-centered. So, to access the drop-down menus, first, turn on the EVL2 and BRM2 then position, position your cursor to the EVL2 and BRM2, then left click to reveal the drop down menus. Then left click the off center to access the drop and carry on the video circle. So you can now drop and carry your EVL2 and BRM2 to the new center target. So, like for example, sa screen, so ginamit natin na nilipat natin yung EVL2 and BRM2 natin sa pinakamalapit na target bezel. So to turn off your EVL2 and BRM2, left click the readout and that's all for me. May I call on uh, Midshipman Alit for the next topic. So good morning everyone. Once again, I am Midshipman Alit and thank you Mr. Dominado. Okay. So now my topic, my next topic would be the guard zone and the guard zone alarms or if is AD alarms. So first, to uh, activate the guard zone, let's go to the soft key menu here located at the bottom right corner and let's click the AZ soft key okay okay now as you can see uh, what appears is a data that shows zone 1 off and zone 2 off so now let's turn on the guard zone 1 okay and let's also turn on the guard zone 2 okay so now as you can see we have the guard zone 1 which is indicated by this red area here or the red line here and we have guard zone 2 which is indicated by the white line here now notice or take note the, that the guard zone ones and the guard zone two can also be edited to form different shapes or different circular shapes it can also be edited in a ecliptic form or a circular pattern so to do that um you have, you only have to drag um your guard zone one then drag it to your desired shape and also the guard zone two same as the guard zone one click it hold it then drag it to your desired shape so next would be the arms okay so now as you can see okay, let's go back first okay as you can see there's there are still no alarms indicated since there are no target ships uh, entering the said guard zones especially guard zone 2 which is in the art of part of the guard zone okay so now let's let me give you an example when an alarm is stripped off okay Okay, so now as you can see here, it appears a GZ alarm 1. So what, you, what this indicates is guard zone alarm on target number 1. So let's assume that there is target number 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So now as you can see, target number 1 is inside the guard zone number 2. So a guard zone alarm is stripped off, indicating GZ alarm on target number 1. Okay, let's now exit the guard zone. Okay, so now as you can see, there are different types of alarms. We have the UA alarm, um, uh, down this is the GG alarm, the log error, the loss, the target, the compass, and the standby error. And also we have the A alarm, which is also the same as the UA alarm, um, but their functions are different. Also, there is another type of alarm called the limits and settings alarm. So this is set when you are setting your limits and settings and it will alarm as soon as um, a target um, is approaching or is at the limits and settings of your, dis of your um, desired alarm. So that will be all for my report and may I call on Midship Woman Dimayuda to end our presentation. Thank you Midshipman Adit. Now we already demonstrated the basic operation of radar control or display indicator such as their function, setting up, and maintaining the display of a radar simulator. So before ending our presentation, just remember that in life, rapid storm, it always proves the strength of our anchor. 
Once again, from Lab B of Navigation 5 NS2A1, thank you for listening. Thank you.